Hey, what's up everyone? This is Vegetarian Zombie, and I want to welcome you back to Beginning C Sharp with Unity video tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to be covering polymorphism, but before we do that, let's dive into your last task. In your last task, I had you create an interface and then simply implement that interface on our alien object. So we're gonna do that right now, just to show you exactly how that was done. Instead of creating the interface inside of the actual object, I'm going to actually create a C-sharp script that contains just the interface. And I'm just gonna call this iShootable. And to keep things organized, I'm just gonna create a folder and we're gonna call this interfaces and we'll throw this shootable interface inside of there. Next, we're gonna open this up. And again, the shootable interface is simply going to contain one method and that method is to fire. So this is a mono behavior and we don't want any of this. So we're gonna delete this and we're going to change this from public class to just to simply interface shootable like so. And next, we're going to simply just provide the method fire. And of course, this is a void type, so it's not going to return anything. In fact, we don't even need this too. Now this is probably a good opportunity to provide some comments. And there's actually style guides that you can look up for properly documented documenting your classes and interfaces. So we have the shootable interface. Next, we want to now open up our alien. So I'm just gonna come in here and open up the alien CS. And here we're just gonna put I shootable, like so. Now that we have our interface, the next thing we want to do is implement our interface. We simply do this by just typing fire, like so. And in this case, we just want to log a message. We'll just say alien fires. Now we're getting an error message and that's because we're not importing the namespace or shall I say using the namespace. So we'll just use Unity Engine like so. So now that we have our fire interface done, we can now simply call the method like we've called other methods. And there you go, you've implemented an interface. Now, some of you are probably wondering what good is it to take all these methods and move it into a separate file and force classes to use that? Well, this is where we dive into the world of polymorphism. Now, before I begin, I'd just like you to know that polymorphism is a pretty deep topic. And it's one of these topics where that once you get into the matrix, you'll understand what the matrix is. And the same thing with polymorphism is once you get into polymorphism, you'll really start understanding how it affects all how it affects your code in various different ways. There's many different types of polymorphism. There's dynamic polymorphism, there's static polymorphism. In this case, we're just gonna be working with polymorphism in how it works with interfaces and objects. In future videos, you'll be seeing how you can work with polymorphism in terms of inheritance, how you can work with it in terms of methods and so forth. So there's a lot to cover, but we'll be covering it gradually throughout this video series. So what is polymorphism besides a, a fancy word that you can use to impress people at cocktail parties? Polymorphism is consisted of two different words. Poly, which means many, and morph, which means to change, meaning this thing can change into many different other things. When learning new concepts, such as polymorphism, I find it very helpful to apply it to real life so you can get a better idea versus thinking in terms of objects and structs and classes and so forth. We are all polymorphic, meaning we change depending on certain contexts. For instance, when you go to the movies, your behavior may be slightly different from when you were, say, in class learning something. And that behavior is going to be different, say, if you're with your kids or with your siblings. All these things are different based on the context, but you at your core are not changing. You're essentially exposing certain parts of your personality based on the context, 
Now, other parts of your personality may not be appropriate. Say, for instance, your hit tunes at karaoke wouldn't be appropriate when you go to the movie theater. By starting to sing in a movie theater, you're going to get a lot of people upset at you. Now, I know some of you may start singing in a movie theater. That's fine, and that may be appropriate for that certain instance. But for the most part, you're going to define your behavior by the context that you're in. In computer science, objects are no different. We can have objects be different according to a certain context that they're in. And this allows us to take all these different objects that have no association with each other and group them together and act on them based on their behavior. Let's go back to our alien object. Here we're going to create a new alien. We're going to write alien and then we're going to provide a name of the variable. Then we're going to provide an assignment operator, the equal sign, and then we're going to put new alien. This creates us a new alien. Now take a look at this. When I first started learning programming languages, this kind of confused me. Here we're defining our alien, alien, my alien equals new alien. But doesn't the beginning part of this seem a little redundant? Here we're defining the alien type. And then right after the equal sign, we're putting equals new alien. I mean, it's you can infer that it's an alien. Why are we being so specific about the variable name? You would think that this statement, my alien equals new alien, is just conveys just as much information as alien, my alien equals new alien. Because we know that my alien variable is a type of alien because of the object that we're assigning to it. You would think. You see, that type defines what methods and properties, indexers and so forth, are available to that object that's being used. In our case, we know that the alien implements the interface iShootable. Instead of using the alien name, we can simply replace that reference variable with iShootable instead. Now we have iShootable my alien equals new alien. What this is saying, any time we're using the my alien object, we can only use the properties, the methods, and so forth that are declared inside of that interface. Other code now doesn't need to know that this is an alien object. It just knows that this object is implementing the iShootable interface. If we created another interface called iPersistible, then, and that alien implemented the iPersistible interface, then we could reference that alien by that interface. Instead of saying iShootable, my alien, we could then write iPersistible, my alien. And again, all the methods that we defined inside of iPersistible will be available to that alien object. That's because the calling code will only see the reference of the variable. The variable, it's that reference tells any calling code what this object can do. Okay, so let's see this in action. But before we do that, let me just lay out what we're going to be doing. Say for instance, we're playing a game, it has aliens, but it also has turrets. It has maybe guys on the ground that are shooting at you, and we'll say you're a spaceship. All these items are going to shoot at some point. Now, the aliens, the turrets, and any other objects that you create have no relation to each other, but you still want them to shoot. Well, how will you group them? As you know, we could create an array, but what kind of array would it be? What I would like to do is store all the objects in an array and then iterate through that array and have each of those objects fire. But remember, when we create an array, we create it based on type. So that if we have an alien array, we can't put a turret into that alien array. So what we can do is create an array based on an interface. So let's see this in action. So here we have in Mono Develop, we have our alien open. I'm going to create a new object. And this time, I'm going to call this turret. And this is going to be a simple, uh, simple object that will implement 
our, and this will be a simple object that will implement the iShootable interface. I'm going to switch back to Unity here. And what I'll do, and what I'd like to do is in my hierarchy here, we've been working on a cube. And I'm just going to delete this cube for now. And instead, I'm going to create an empty. And an empty is just a game object that has only a transform attached to it. I'm going to select this, and I'm just going to put game manager. And this is typically an object that I have in my games that will manage all the various aspects of the game. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to click Add Component. We're going to do New Script, and we're just going to call this Game Manager Script, like so. So this adds, this creates a new script for me, and then attaches it to the object. The first thing I'm going to do is create a private variable that's going to contain my array of objects that will fire. Now, when you first see a reference with an interface, this can be a little confusing because you can't create interface objects. Interfaces only define methods that are inside of that interface. But remember, we're not creating an object here. All that we're doing is defining how the object is being referenced. We're saying this object will now respond to these types of methods. So I'm gonna call this enemies and we're gonna create a new array. I'm going to have this have four like so. All that I did was create an array that has four elements. And this array will contain only objects that implement the iShootable interface. It's not creating iShootable objects. It's just saying if you put an object in here, that object must implement iShootable. Now I'm going to create an alien. And I believe I have to import a namespace first. When I say import, that comes from my Java background. In C Sharp, we use using instead. Java just uses the keyword import. Now that we have our aliens, we're going to add each one to the array. At this point now, we have our aliens inside of the array, and now we're going to have these aliens print a message when they're firing. Just a note about working with structs in interfaces. When you reference a struct by its interface, the c -sharp runtime is doing a lot of processing in the background to make that possible. In the last video, LightStriker made an excellent point that interfaces can become unpredictable when working with structs. I'm not quite sure why Microsoft allowed us to use structs with interfaces when they can cause such problems in your code. But for the most part, you're going to want to avoid using interfaces with structs. Now, in the next video, we'll be reviewing everything that we've done in this section, and I'll be outlining some best practices when working with structs. For the most part, you'll be working with classes, which you'll be learning about in the next section. At this point now, we're going to loop through each of our objects. And now I'm going to reference the object by its interface type. So here we're looping through the enemies array and we're taking out that object and we're saying this is a type of shootable. Now when I type shootable and I press the dot operator, you can see we just have our fire method like so because the shootable interface doesn't know about any other method that's available on the alien object. It just knows that this thing can shoot. If we went back to our iShootable interface and we created a new method, that would appear as well. Say we had an explode method like so. And we come back to our into our game manager, and this is going to be a compiler since I didn't implement it yet. We can type, you can see we have explode now. And that's because this code has no idea what this each enemy is, it just knows what it can do.
Now, if we run this, now if we run this, that was a compile error based on my variable. I forgot to assign it uh, an array type. I'm going to deselect the game manager and you can see alien fires, alien fires, alien fires. And we have a null pointer, so there's null. It's expecting this to be four elements, and currently we have three in there. So let's add a new element, and this time we're going to create a turret. So now we're going to have our turret fire. And again, I can put it inside of this array here. And remember that because it implements the turret, and because it implements the iShootable interface, it can share a space with this array. If this array was a type of alien, then the turret wouldn't be able to share that space with it. Now we're gonna switch back to Unity. And we'll deselect that, and you can see alien fires, alien fires, alien fires, turret fires. So now all the objects on my screen can now fire together at the same time because they're all grouped by their interface. Okay, that is your introduction to polymorphism. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, there's a whole lot more to it and we'll be diving into it more in the next section. At this point, you can see how objects can ultimately change based on their context. Okay, for your task, I want you to create an iPersistible interface and I want you to implement it on the alien object, implement it on the player object, and you can even implement it on the turret object if you would like to create that as well. Then I want you to create a save method on your game manager, so you'll have to create that as well. And in the save method, I want you to loop through all the objects that implement the iPersistible interface, and then call the save method on that interface. And the save method can simply just print out object is saved or some other thing like that. Okay, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And in the next video, we're going to be doing a review of this entire section. We're gonna be covering everything that you we've covered so far, and I'll be outlining some best practices when using structs. In this video series, I wanted you to be introduced to structs so that you can know that you have them in your tool belt. For the most part, you're going to be using classes, and that's where a lot of the power of the language comes from. All right, everyone, that's the end of this video, and I will see you in the next one. See you then.